Hi everybody, Creamy here. Welcome to my tutorial series for clan folk. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at food and we're going to cover everything from hunting, fishing, foraging, farming, cooking, storage, spoilage, stats and preserving or drying food. We're also going to be talking about the latest clan folk rats and cats update 7 and how that impacts on food. And I'm going to share some tips and tricks with you to hopefully make your life easier. There's a good range of food in the game. You are going to start out with a handful of dried meat and dried mushrooms, which are going to provide you with ample time to set yourself up with your own food sources. First, we'll have a quick look at foraging. Now, the first available food sources are berries, which grow in bushes and mushrooms, which grow around tree stumps and trees. If you click on your work tab, you select your gather instruction and click and drag to instruct your workers to gather these food sources. Early game, you don't want to gather too many of these as they will go off fast. Berries especially are good to gather if you're desperate but not really much good for anything else. And later in the game, with mushrooms, they become the absolute king of this game. You can unlock the drying rack in the cooking tab um, to dry mushrooms. Dried mushrooms are incredibly OP as they do not go off. I've got no doubt that they're going to be nerfed in the future and this rats and cats update has thought a little bit in that way, but not hugely. They're still incredibly good. Next, we're going to have a look at fishing. Now, fishing falls under the hunting job order. It doesn't have a separate fishing order. The next thing you're going to unlock in the game after berries and mushrooms is eels. Stinky eels, to be exact. You'll be able to craft eel traps. You place them around the edge of the lake and clicking on the traps will allow you to select how many eels you want to catch. You can manually catch eels by clicking on the eel icon or you can select to auto supply a certain amount. If you choose to select auto supply, the function will be applied globally to all of your eel traps. Alternatively, what you can do is set the trap to catch a certain amount of eels, then use the wait next day function and then click the repeat job function. And this will set an ongoing work order for catching X amount per day. However, make sure you keep an eye on the fishing stats of your pond or lake and adjust accordingly. You can see from this image that I did not do that and I've overfished the lake to the point where it has 4% out of 100% left. You can cook eels on the campfire or the fireplace or in the kitchen and set the work order similar as you have done with your eel traps. Later on, you're going to unlock fishing. You can place a fishing rod or fishing spot on the lake to catch fish. Set the work order in the same way as you would the eel trap. Now, fish can be cooked on the campfire or fireplace or the kitchen and later can be dried on the meat dryer to preserve them and slow their decay rate. Rabbits and foxes. Pretty early on, you're going to unlock bows and snare traps. Now, these can be used on rabbits and foxes. Well, I don't know about the snare traps. I gotta be honest there, I very rarely use them and I've only ever used them on rabbits. I don't know if they can be used on foxes. Maybe somebody can clue us in on that. Um, rabbits are pretty easy to spot on the map. I personally just scan and look for rabbit holes or rabbit moving in the grass. But if you're struggling and want a really easy way to find the rabbits, then all you need to do is turn on the thermal imager in the top right. Rabbits will then pop out on the map. Now rabbits produce meat and hide. You'll also get the occasional fox, which yields more meat and hide. If you do see one, don't let that chance pass you by. Hunt that mother trucker down. Even if you have enough food without hunting rabbits and foxes, you do want to make a big effort to hunt them as they produce raw hide, which can then be dried on a, a hide drying rack for warm winter clothing, which you will need for your first winter. So do make sure you place down a drying rack and hide storage when you start hunting. Rabbits and foxes, as I've said, produce meat, which can initially be cooked to produce cooked meat. It degrades quite quickly, uh, but later you're going to unlock the drying rack and you can dry the meat for dried meat, which will last longer. Before you begin killing in earnest, though, do be sure to place down a butcher block so that you can process the animals into meat and raw hide. Otherwise, they're just going to go off and they're going to be put on your dump pile. Domestic animals. Now, there's a range of domestic animals in the game. You've got chickens, cows, pigs, sheep and goats. And actually now cats. Cats serve a purpose. There are wild cats and you can tame them or buy them. But we're just going to have a look at the chickens, cows, pigs, sheep and goats. If you start on shepherd mode, you're going to start with a flock of sheep. On the other modes, I think you start with some chickens. Personally, I always get rid of them. I just don't bother with them. But chickens produce eggs for eating. Currently, the eggs are eaten raw and they tend to go off fairly fast. Sheep produce wool, uh, which you're going to need for warm clothing. Later in the game, you can create woolen outfits. Cows and goats produce milk, which can be turned into butter and cheese later in the game. 
and uh, pigs are especially good for breeding for meat and hide as they give birth to multiple offspring. I'll be doing a complete tutorial on domesticated animals so do keep an eye out for that but you just really need to know that they can produce food stuff and they're a good source of meat and hide. Milk is used for making butter at the butter churn or cheese at the cheese press. Now clan folk can drink milk but it doesn't provide much, much sustenance. It only gives you I think 100. Likewise butter can be eaten raw but it only gives you about 500 sustenance. Cheese again is only 500 sustenance but it does last much longer than milk or butter. Milk has a rotting time of one day, butter of five, and cheese lasts for up to 15 days. So it's a really good stockpile. We will be having a look at the stats later on in this video of all of the food. Next, have a peek at farming, guys, and specifically oat sheep. Once you unlock the side, you can cut grass. One of the best food sources out there is oat sheep. Early game, you can cut while growing oat sheep, which is golden in color and can be processed in the thresher to produce straw and oat grain. Now, don't leave your oat grain outside on the ground, it's gonna degrade over time. And don't process and eat all of your seeds because you're going to want to keep some for replanting. If you eat through all of it, you're gonna be reliant on buying it from the plains trader after unlocking a one-star rep with them to try and replenish your stock. Tilling the soil and planting oat grain will allow growing of more oat sheaf. Later in the game, you'll unlock a kern, which is going to allow you to process oat grain into oat flour. You are going to need sacks crafted to store your oat flour in and you want to store it on a uh, on an oat pallet, oat sack pallet, whatever it's called. The nice thing about oat flour is it's not going to spoil, so it's a really, really nice food to have around. Oat flour and water can be turned into dough at the dough table and from there baked into bread with a bread oven. Bread can be eaten as a meal on its own or it's used as an ingredient for stew which is crafted at the kitchen using a bowl, raw meat, water and bread. Oat flour can be used to make brows or um, oatmeal. In clam folk guys, it's pretty much storage for everything. You're gonna begin with a basic food stockpile which is on the ground. You unlock this immediately after you've picked your first berries. Next, you're gonna unlock a serving basket for your berries and mushrooms and a meat rack for you to store your, your meat off the ground. This helps to lengthen the amount of time food takes to spoil. After unlocking the basket and the rack, I will always destroy my food stockpile. And after unlocking planks and nails, you can then unlock the pantry shelves and serving tables. Once unlocked and crafted, I'll then destroy my serving baskets and meat rack. Now, food can be stored in the pantry shelves, which provides much greater storage than the basket and the rack. The serving table will remain empty until your clan folk place cooked food items on there. For example, cooked fish, but not raw fish. Your clan folk will eat from the serving table when they're hungry. Now, take time to have a look at the storage selection, guys. As I said, there's pretty much storage for everything in clan folk. You are going to want to have things like the oat storage pallet, water pallets, dish, shel uh, dish shelving, um, and so on and so forth. So do take a good look at that storage and make sure that you've got that in place. Your first unlockable cooking um, item is a cooking fire. This will provide warmth, light, and basic cooking op options. Here you can craft cooked eel, cooked meat, and cooked fish. Be sure to check your clan's skills and set your best cook to priority. Now, this doesn't always have to be the one with the highest cooking skill. I'll always look for a good cook with um, good skill multipliers so they learn faster and upskill faster. I think, for example, I think it's Rory in my current series. His cooking level was zero, uh, but he is a juvenile, so he learns eight times faster. He has a happy smiley face when he's cooking, so that's good as well. That speeds him up. The more they enjoy it, the better their multipliers, the quicker they are going to upskill. So it's much better to go for one um, like that and just choose the highest skill. The higher the cooking skill, the faster they will craft. Next, you're going to unlock a stone fireplace for your clan folk. This attaches to the wall and again allows cooking veal, cooked fish and cooked meat. Unlocking the kitchen is going to be your next unlock and this allows all the previously mentioned craftables but also stew and bros. And on a final note on cooking guys, auto supply can be used to great effect when cooking but beware that when you set an auto supply task in let's say your fireplace, the instruction is global. It doesn't apply just to fireplaces, it applies to all cooking structures. So, for example, setting a auto supply of cooked eel in a fireplace will turn on auto supply of cooked eel in cooking fires and kitchens too. Cellars, fridge, cold rooms are really important. The colder your food storage area, the longer 
food is going to last. Obviously, this doesn't apply to the mighty dried mushroom, which lasts better than a cockroach in a nuclear apocalypse. Now, with the um, the influx of rats, it does the mushrooms can spoil now, but again, they are the best food stuff for not spoiling and with that in mind you will want to create a nice cold storage area for your food the longer your food can last especially through winter the better your clan folks chances of survival there are a number of strategies people are employing some are digging into the mountain and creating a storage cellar there others choose to store the food outside to keep it cooler personally I go and create a dedicated food storage room. I place vents on the outside wall and this keeps a nice cool sub-zero storage room for my food in winter and during the other seasons keeps the temperature as low as possible from the rest of the house. Now we do have, uh, and we've mentioned, a new update, cats and rats. Update 7. As of update 7, rats are going to spoil your food. They're going to nibble on it and poo on it. And apparently it does take quite a few rats to make an impact. But if you notice your frozen dried mushrooms losing quality, it's the rats pooing on them. Rats can pass under doors, so there's no keeping them out. They are, they say, rats after all. They're scared of humans and will hide under various objects and disappear, but they're not gone. Uh, they are still there nibbling and pooing and when you leave the room you're going to notice them coming back out poking their noses out to deal with rats you've now got two options you can build rat traps which are a new addition as of update seven or cats well you can't build the cats but you can either tame wild cats which again are new and they become domesticated and they pair up with one of your your clan folk and become theirs and they will deal with your rat population or you can purchase them from the trader now i don't know which trader you can purchase them from but um there is a trader that you can purchase them from <laughs> now i'm going to pop up the stats guys showing things like food values and spoilage while I say a couple of final words. So number one is do not forget to craft a dishwasher, especially if you plan on crafting stew or brews, you will need to wash your dirty plates. Be very strategic in the placement of your items. Have your oat flour pallets next to your kern and your dough maker. Have your dishwasher close to your dish shelving. Have your kitchen close to your serving table. Use auto haul. Now this will apply not just to cooking, but to any crafting of any items. Turning this on will ensure that once an item has been crafted, the crafter will immediately carry it to storage. Oftentimes they'll drop things on the floor and things start to spoil. So it minimizes spoilage and it minimizes hauling work. Blockers, guys, use blockers in your stockpile section. You will see that you have the option to place a blocker to prevent items from being dropped within a certain area. Place these blockers around your cooking fire, your fireplace, your bread oven, and anything that could potentially create a fire. This reduces fire hazards because people can't drop things in the area of effect. And that is it for the cooking tutorial for clan folk. I hope you found this helpful. And if you have any tips to share, please do leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to give this a like, comment and share for that good old YouTube algorithm. And do stay watching for more clan folk tutorials coming up. Until next time, stay safe and take care.